Good morning and welcome to all of you from Stellantis uh, booth and stand at uh, CS Las Vegas. It's our pleasure to welcome you. My name is Bertrand Blaise. I'm in charge of corporate communication for Stellantis. Today, you will have a presentation uh, from Carlos Tarres, our CEO, who is with us today. Uh, it will be followed by a Q&A session to which NetGreek, a chief technology officer, will attend, as well as Yves Bonfond, a chief software officer. So, before uh, we, we start uh, this uh, presentation, I would like to thank you to join for everywhere in the world. So uh, it's a, a purely digital uh, address to uh, the media and, uh, and people who have uh, joined us this morning. I will now hand over to Carlos Tavares for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Bertrand. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen and Happy New Year to all of you. Thank you for joining us today. The automotive industry is in the midst of a deep, deep transformation, to say the least. In the next 20 years, we have an opportunity to redefine mobility and cars and how we experience them. Not even a year ago, Stellantis was created to take the lead in changing the way our societies move. We are on an ambitious journey to set new benchmarks in our fast evolving industry and create breakthrough technologies and customer centric solutions that drive the future of our 14 iconic brands. We are reimagining the future of mobility for generations to come as we quickly shift to a tech company providing our customers with safe, sustainable and affordable mobility solutions. Just six months after creating Stellantis, we announced over 30 billion euros of investments in electric vehicles and software through 2025 to execute our transformation. As you know, Stellantis will implement this tech strategy on the back of a proven track record combining internal capabilities and working side by side with either our partners or specifically forge strategic partnerships and joint ventures. At Stellantis, we have a very passionate and highly dedicated and talented team, and we are investing in reskilling more than 1,000 engineers per year with a software and data academy that we are creating. In parallel, we are hiring software talents, mostly from tech companies with a global objective to reach a team of 4,500 people by 2024, which is coherent with the ramp up of our projects. They will leverage the Stellantis ambitious partnership ecosystem that we have already built last year. And we are starting 2022 with today's announcement with Amazon. It's a two-fold ecosystem. First, to support advanced infotainment automated driving efforts and drive innovation. We have a partnership with Foxconn in mobile drive on Stella Smart Cockpit announced in August. And we developed four families of chips that will cover over 80% of the company's microcontrollers needs announced in December. We have a partnership with BMW to develop our L3 ADAS capability with Waymo for the development of level four and level four plus equipped vehicles. And the deal with Amazon is about first collaborating to deliver software solutions for Stellantis new digital cabin platform, Stella Smart Copic, starting in 2024. Second, using uh, Amazon's as our preferred cloud provider for vehicle platforms to deliver on our long-term software focused vision. Third, launching collaborative engineering and innovation initiatives and tools to accelerate the time to market for new digital products and upskill Stellantis global workforce. And finally, providing Amazon as the first commercial customer of the new Ram ProMaster battery electric vehicle in 2023, further expanding Amazon's sustainable delivery network. 
Our ecosystem also aims at supporting our electric battery developments in coherence with regional regulations. We start in Europe with ACC, a joint venture with Total Energy and Mercedes-Benz to create a European battery champion with a capacity plan to at least 120 gigawatt hour by 2030. We will also develop a global production capacity of more than 60 gigawatt hours in North America with LG and Samsung. In the field of solid state batteries, we are working with Factorial, targeting a start of production by 2026. Finally, we aim to supply battery grade lithium hydroxide with Vulcan in Europe, based on geothermal energy, to produce battery quality lithium hydroxide from brine without the use of fossil fuels and minimal water usage. As you can assess, in just under one year, we have outlined the main pillars of our tech strategy with four vehicle platforms and three tech software platforms in order to address and master the trends that are transforming our industry, particularly electrification, connectivity, and autonomous driving. Today at CES, we invite the world to see the full capability and potential of Stellantis with a tech plan which is quickly progressing and will put us on the front row in the race to innovate and improve the way the world moves. Our ambition is to be among the first to deliver open software-defined platforms to our customers and to achieve leading positions in several domains by 2025. E-powertrains, digital cockpits, connected services, and complexity reduction. From a financial standpoint, we have a clear commitment for a significant growth based on facts. We have already electrified models on sale, not less than 33, including few cell vans, and we will put on the market eight additional BVs in the next 18 months. While launching close to 50 low emission vehicles across our 14 brands in the next four years. This will allow us to sell by 2030 over 70% of low emission vehicles in Europe and over 40% in the United States. In addition, we will leverage our leading positions in Europe in the LCV segment, where we have currently a full battery electric vehicle offering. We'll continue to be a leader in the efficient use of capital, expecting our overall R&D and cap spending through 2025 to continue to be about 30% more efficient than the industry average based on percentage of spend versus revenues. Moreover, we are targeting approximately 4 billion in annual revenues by 2026 and 20 billion euros by 2030 generated by software-enabled products, offerings, and subscriptions. This will be supported by 34 million monetizable connected cars expected by 2030, with a majority of all new vehicles to be fully over the air updatable by 2024. As you know us, no need to recall that our strategy, our recognized capability in execution, our ecosystem, and our unrivaled iconic brands portfolio will put Stellantis among the best in class players, if not setting a new benchmark in the industry. Now it's time to start the Q&A session together with Yves Bonfond and, and Yot Curic. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Carlos. So uh, I just recall that uh, we will answer to the question is the frame of the quiet period that we are uh, now uh, in at Stellantis because we announced our earnings in February. So we took the first question coming from the software day that we held on uh, December. Uh, that we had no time to take. The last question of that session was, do you feel the transformation of the auto industry is accelerating? Well, certainly, yes. Certainly, yes, it's accelerating uh, very strongly and it's very exciting. It's very exciting because not only things are going much faster, not only in the way the world moves, but also in the way we are making decisions, uh, in the way we are executing our decisions. And we feel that the company is now fully empowered to move as fast, if not faster, than the world is moving. It's quite clear that 
Yes, it's accelerating. Yes, it's exciting. And we are blessed with the fact that we are creating Stellantis exactly at the moment where all of those changes are happening, which is giving our company an opportunity to reset the clock and to enhance the way we prepare our decisions, enhance the way we make the decisions, and accelerate the way we execute our decisions. So certainly, it is, it is accelerating, and it is exciting that we are creating Stellantis at the precise moment where the industry is accelerating. And I want to make it very clear that our mission for Stellantis is quite simple and quite rewarding. We want to magnify the freedom of mobility of our citizens. We want to magnify this experience. We want to magnify the fact that they can enjoy to be free of their movements by using the mobility solution that Stellantis and the most talented people in this industry are creating for them. So yes, it's accelerating. Yes, there is a new world coming. We are blessed with the fact that we are creating this new company at the precise moment where things are accelerating. We have the financial sound position that you know. We have the technology that has been presented to you and that will be committed to you by our top executives. And in this precise moment, we are making many new strategic deals and partnerships with highly skilled partners that we, we of course, respect and that uh, we love to work with. One of them uh, was uh, signed very recently and announced this morning. It's the partnership, a strategic partnership with Amazon. And I would like to ask our uh, software architect to comment this deal with Amazon, uh, which I think is interesting for all of us to understand. Eve, would you like to comment on this partnership, please? My pleasure. Thank you very much, uh, Carlos. Good morning to uh, all of you. Uh, we are very excited uh, with the uh, partnership we, we signed with Amazon. Uh, this is really about uh, four core elements. Uh, first of all, uh, it's about a number of uh, technology in the cockpit, uh, in the digital cabin of the vehicle, uh, covering things like uh, Alexa, uh, voice recognition, uh, Alexa personal assistant, uh, Fire TV, uh, all this put into a brand new uh, software framework uh, to cover uh, the cockpit of the vehicle. Uh, the second piece um, is uh, a collaboration uh, leveraging the uh, capabilities in the cloud um, of Amazon to cover uh, our data uh, platform, vehicle data platform, um, as well as uh, utilizing the um, uh, computing power uh, Amazon has in the cloud, uh, especially for uh, machine learning. As uh, I explained in December uh, in the software day that contextualization and personalization of the vehicle was core to our strategy. Uh, and we will be able to rely uh, on the uh, cloud computing uh, platform of uh, Amazon to support uh, that direction. The third dimension, uh, which is um, extremely um, important, uh, is about uh, growing our software capabilities. We announced the creation of a Software Academy, Software and Data Academy uh, at Stellantis, and we are very excited that Amazon will contribute uh, to that academy, uh, bringing uh, its expertise uh, to bear and train, uh, contribute to train uh, our people. That includes as well uh, the um, uh, software workbench. Uh, we are creating a, a software environment uh, to uh, uh, support all the software development, uh, covering development, uh, testing, integration, uh, and this will happen uh, in the cloud. On top of that, um, we have the, the van part, uh, which uh, uh, Carlos uh, mentioned. Uh, we are very excited to have uh, Amazon as our lead customer uh, for the ProMaster uh, BEV, and uh, we intend to put together thousands of uh, BEVs uh, on the road uh, every year in the future, starting 2023. Thank you, Yves. Next question. OK, so ladies first, we start with Brianna Noble from Detroit News. The question is, Regarding the Amazon partnership, to what extent does Stellantis have control over when, how the software can be updated? Does Amazon have to provide an OK to do so? What does mean uh, for Stellantis ability to respond to bugs or other needs that arise? Well, that's a very, a very great question. In fact, this partnership is an enabler. It's an enabler to enhance the experience for our customers. It's an enabler uh, to make sure that we can upgrade 
the performance of the products that our customers care, can enjoy through the life cycle of those products. But to be more specific on this question, perhaps I should ask uh, uh, Ned to give you a little bit more details about the over-the-air capabilities and how we expect uh, to update uh, those, uh, those performances through this uh, partnership. Ned, could you please take this one? Thank you, Carlos. Um, <clears throat> so uh, our vision and the, the, the plan that uh, even I have been crafting is to uh, deliver cloud-first experiences. I think the, uh, the experience the customers expect to be delightful, to be immersive, to be always fresh. And so this partnership with Microsoft is focused on essentially delivering as many experiences as possible cloud-first. So you don't have to do over-the-air update in a way of you know, traditional over-the-air update. So uh, technology is evolving, and so we are leapfrogging the way that people think about uh, you know, cabin experience and, and software uh, inside the cabin. So that's the first step. So as much as we can, we will do uh, uh, not over-the-air update, but uh, updating the cloud capabilities to deliver the kind of immersive, delightful experiences that customers uh, plan to have. Now, when, when it comes to software in the vehicle, uh, our agreement and, and approach with Amazon is that we own that experience. We partner very closely with Amazon, of course, uh, but the Amazon has been a great partner in a way of uh, understanding that uh, the, 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 this joint customer between us and Amazon do, do require um, a, a ability to, at some point, uh, deliver a new uh, onboard experience, and that experience will be then, uh, and the software will be, be decided uh, on our regular cadence. It could be a quarterly cadence. That's what we're planning to do right now. But um, uh, sometimes we have to do quicker, and we'll do that. Thank you, Ned. OK, so the next question is coming from Italy. Alessio Giacona from Corriere della Sera. The question is, how does the new partnership with Amazon affect the roadmap of Stellantis? And the second part of the question, with, with all these new players entering uh, the automotive industry, Sony, Amazon, or Apple, how do they change the scenario of the automotive industry, and how do they influence your strategies? Well, it's a great question. We could spend a couple of hours on this simple one, <laughs> so let me try to be as focused as I can. First of all, this partnership is an enabler of the Stellantis uh, strategy. It's an enabler in certain areas of our technology roadmap, in certain areas of our business, and by the way, it's a very balanced uh, partnership from a financial standpoint, very, very balanced. So it's an enabler, specific parts of, uh, of our roadmap. And then you say, how does it affect the automotive industry uh, way of doing business? Well, in the case of Stellantis, it's very simple. We are becoming an automotive tech company, and we are going fast forward, which means that it's not that it is affecting us, is that we have decided to execute this strategy to become an automotive tech company because we believe that this technology and the partnership with Amazon and not only with Foxconn and, and many others is an enabler to execute this strategy, which is, as I said, uh, to give us the capability to deliver on our mission. And our mission is to magnify the freedom of mobility that we offer our customers. So it's an enabler, and it is there to support a specific part of this strategy, and we just have uh, to think, perhaps, in a different way, which is, it's not affecting us. Is that we are using the opportunity of this partnership to go fast forward in the direction that we have set for ourselves uh, with the mission that I have described to you. So we are very comfortable, extremely comfortable with these partnerships. They are always win-win. We have a specific focus on the fact that they are very balanced from a financial perspective, and they fit a specific purpose as one brick of the overall technology roadmap of the company to deliver on the goals that we have already expressed to you. So uh, we don't see it as something that is affecting us. We see it as an opportunity through a rewarding win-win balanced partnership to contribute to the execution of uh, the roadmap that we have decided for ourselves in the context of the mission that I commented. So that's how we see it. Thank you. 
So we are back to the US for the third question with a question from Gabriel Coppola from Bloomberg. Will consumers accept aftermarket digital sales? Will they pay for things they are used to getting in a package at point of sale? Very specific business-oriented question. Great question. Thank you, Daniel. Can I hand over to you, Yves, for this one? Yes, uh, with pleasure, uh, Carlos. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the capability to uh, buy things from the vehicle uh, that uh, we, are, we will be offering in the new uh, digital cockpit is just to improve the experience of the customer. So it's not like we're going to uh, uh, sell things uh, that were uh, given uh, away before. We just want this to be a better experience of interacting uh, with the overall ecosystem uh, of, the, uh, of the car maker. So uh, this will be helpful to uh, get predictive maintenance information. This will be helpful to manage your interaction with your point of service. Uh, this will be help helpful uh, to understand what specific um, uh, aftermarket equipments uh, would fit your vehicle given your uh, habits of driving. Um, and then ordering those uh, uh, equipments in a more easy way. So that's all about making the experience better uh, and more seamless and more personalized to the customer. So it's not, uh, I mean, there is, there is no uh, question of things that were not paid before will become paid or something like that. It's just all about increasing the experience, making it more easy, more personalized, more focused on what the customer actually needs. Thank you, Yves. Next question. Next question from Daniel Swick from Velt about Amazon Corporation. Uh, who will be the owner of the customer relationship when it comes to digital service, Amazon or Stellantis? What share of their future revenue will each partner get? Back to you, Yves. Thank you, uh, thank you Carlos. Uh, <clears throat> this is a very um, important question. What we appreciate uh, a lot in the work we're doing with Amazon is the uh, uh, openness of Amazon about the customer relation and the focus of Amazon on the customer satisfaction. I think this is one uh, of the core value of, uh, of Amazon. Of course, Amazon would explain that better than I would. Uh, but the customer centricity uh, is something that is extremely uh, important. And uh, we will, of course, uh, own the relationship uh, with the customer because this is uh, in relation with the vehicle. Uh, this is customi customized by brand, by the way. Something very important in that partnership is that uh, uh, the, the, our digital cabins and cockpit will continue to express uh, the DNA uh, of our brands. So this is something absolutely uh, uh, central uh, to, the, to the partnership. Uh, on top of that, of course, um, uh, thanks to the App Store uh, that will be uh, provided with the, uh, with the digital cockpit, with our uh, uh, Stella Smart Cockpit solution, uh, there will be a number of apps made available to the customers, and those apps can be uh, provided by any uh, partner. It can be uh, Stellantis itself, uh, can be Amazon, can be any developer. Uh, and then, of course, in the context of those apps, there will probably be some customer relationship uh, between uh, the developer of those applications uh, and the customer itself. Uh, but overall, in the vehicle, we will continue, of course, to own uh, the customer relationship. That's very fundamental. Thank you, Yves. Let's next, go to the next question. It's coming from Paris, from Gilles Guillaume Reuters. When all cars will be electric and embark on Amazon, Google, or Tesla infotainment system, will you still need 14 differentiated brands? Second part of the question of Gilles, there is a lot of talk about how this partnership will benefit the customer. How will today's announcement with Amazon benefit the customer in the short and the long term? Those are two great questions. Uh, thank you, Gilles. Let me try to address them uh, um, with some kind of clarity. First of all, uh, when we deliver an enhanced experience to our customers, uh, when we bring the most competitive uh, freedom of mobility solutions to the customers, it is because we have the capability to develop those solutions by ourselves or with our partners in the context of the scale of Stellantis. What is powerful with Stellantis is not only the fact that we have the most iconic brands in the world. It is the fact that we have the scale to develop uh, new technologies and then to dilute the cost of development of those technologies 
through the significant business footprint of our company. And that is benefiting directly the final consumer because he would not enjoy so much performance, so much ex positive experience if we were not a significant sized company. And the 14 brands represent an excellent way to cover the market. Being uh, in the US with our iconic brands and uh, the Chrysler brand CEO, CEO will tell you more about the Chrysler revival very soon. And we can talk about Ram, we can talk about Jeep, we can talk about Dodge, we could talk about all the brands we have also in Europe, but we are covering the market with those 14 iconic brands that no other company has, and therefore creating the scale that is giving our engineers the capability to go fast and strong in high performance technologies that will benefit the customer experience. And the reason why we can have such a a high level of capability to make strategic deals with strong, very strong tech companies like Amazon or Foxconn or many others is because, to a certain extent, there is a mutual respect to the fact that Stellantis is a significant player of mobility in the world. So all of this is part of the same equation. If we were not the size we have, with our 14 iconic brand portfolio, we could not have those partnerships. We could not spend so much money so fast to develop such high technology performance in our customer experience uh, journeys, and therefore the customer would not be able to benefit from that. So all of this is the same system. And therefore, I know that many of you are always asking us if we are going to keep the 14 brands, First of all, the honest answer is we will see. But the, the right answer right now for the short, mid, and I would say next strategic plan is we are going to use those 14 iconic brands to leverage the power of Stellantis, not only in scale, but using the scale to have great partnerships with highly skilled companies, and at the same time spending the amount of money that we need to spend to develop the most efficient and attractive technologies in the world. So all of this is the same thing. And that, that's the reason why we feel so comfortable. And I can tell you, when we discuss with each brand CEO and their teams about the vision they have for their brand, we are absolutely thrilled by the ideas, by the clarity of what they want to achieve. And then future will say, uh, will tell us if the execution is meeting our expectations. And the execution will be the conclusion and the decision that you are eventually uh, uh, questioning us on. It's about execution of our plans. The plans are now in the final stage of framing. They will be presented to you on March the 1st of this year, so very soon. You will have the long-term strategic plan of Stellantis up to 2030. In, those, in that plan, you have the technology, you have the functions, you have what we are going to do in the brands, what we are going to do in the regions, in each of the biggest markets. And you'll see all of this is a quite consistent package. But we didn't want to wait until March the 1st to give you the most fundamental bricks of our technology roadmap, and that's the, the reason why we had the uh, electrification day back in July 2021, and the software day back in November 2021, and the tech day today with the announcement of our strategic deal with Amazon. So that's the answer we can give this, uh, this, to this question. Thank you. Back to you, uh, Bertrand. Thank you. The so next question necessary for the nurse, because we are really uh, live from the show uh, CS, so come from another stand. Another stand. Next question is about electrification, which is the second challenge of the automotive industry. It comes from Paul Eisenstein from Detroit Bureau. Can you provide more details about the rollout of new BEVs over the next 18 months? Sure. Well, the most uh, important thing to say is that right now as we speak, we have on sale 33 LEV models. They are on sale. You can buy them. 
The second one is that over the next uh, 18 months, we'll have no less than eight additional BEVs. So we are now executing the plan. As I know, we have a very steep uh, ramp up up to 2025 and 2030 in the number of electrified models. You can see it uh, everywhere. You just have to look at the model portfolio of each brand. Look at the 4 by e technology with the Jeep brand in the US. It's obvious you have all the 4 by e capabilities which are enhancing even more uh, the experience uh, with this product. So 33 low emission vehicles currently on sale. As I said, on the LCV, all the vans are currently offered with a BEV uh, version, so it's on sale. Uh, as I said, in 2023, we are going to deliver to Amazon the ProMaster EV uh, capability with this van. And of course, we are going to continue and execute the plan. Over the next uh, 18 months, eight additional BVs are in the making, and now the machine is on, and we are going fast forward. We are in an execution mode. We are on a very fast rolling start, and that's what we are doing right now. So those are the details I can give to you. I don't want to give you more, because I want the brand CEOs to have uh, the opportunity, if not the privilege, to talk to you about each model. So that's their, uh, their uh, room of expression. Uh, but we are fast forward, and we are going very strongly uh, in the execution of our plan. Back to you, Bertrand. Thank you, Carlos. I just want to echo on top of the answer of Carlos that uh, Chris Fuel will present the strategy of uh, Chrysler at 11 Pacific time from here. Uh, next question, we are back to France with uh, Thomas Krinis from Agence France Press. Does your partnership with Amazon mean that you'll rely less on Android? How will you share the revenues with Amazon, especially about the subscription? Let me give this question to Ned. Thank you, Carlos. Um, it's a great question. Uh, in my opinion, it's not about particular technologies, Android or this or that. I, I think it's about customer experience. I think about you know delivering something that's new, modern, and fresh all the time. And so when we look like underlying frameworks and technologies that are available today, you know, it's really difficult to do the things that car companies want to do. So we're embarking on something completely uh, innovative, new, and, um, and, uh, and, and cloud first to kind of deliver all the time fresh experiences. And so underlying frameworks and technologies will enable that type of experience. And then specifically on the subscription side of business and business dealing, I'll turn over to Eve, maybe can, can discuss that a little bit. Thank you, uh, thank you, Ned. Um, of course, as you would imagine, this is highly uh, competitive information. So there's not much I can share about the economics uh, behind the agreement. Um, so I think uh, we'll have to talk about that uh, in another occasion, but uh, we're not going to disclose the economics uh, behind the agreement. I, I guess you can all understand the reasons. Back to you, Bertrand. Yes, next question is coming from Italy. Rosario Morgida from Corator Ruote. Uh, uh, Carlos, you have said that electric mobility is imposed on the automotive sector. Do you feel substantially obligated to accelerate your electrification strategies, or have you decided to accept this imposition of torto coro? Well, Rosario, I love your question. It's a, it's a really fantastic question. Again, uh, I would like to answer to you uh, in two different parts. The one that relates to Stellantis and the one that relates to the Tavares citizen. So let's, let's break down in two parts. The first part in terms of electrification and zero emission mobility, it's a competitive game. It's competitive. My role as the CEO of this company is to make sure that our customers will benefit from the most competitive, meaning safe, clean, and affordable mobility solutions of the industry. That's the competitive part of it. And I feel very comfortable because, as you know, I am a competitor. And each top executive of this company is selected on the basis of his competitive mindset. And I have some of the best around me. So that's very important for you to understand. Regardless of the context in which you would be putting Stellantis. 
electrification or any other context. The top leadership team of this company is a competitive top leadership team. We are here to compete. And that means we are here to try to demonstrate that we offer to our customers mobility solutions which are safer, cleaner, more affordable and more enjoyable than our peers. Because our mission is to magnify the freedom of mobility for our customers. So it's a competitive game. And we love competition. We have competition in our DNA. We have competition in our blood. So we feel very comfortable. As soon as the rules of the markets are clear, the regulations are clear, we love to compete and we try, we don't always succeed, sometimes we fail, sometimes we win, to demonstrate that we can do a better job than anybody else in the industry. So that's one part of the answer. And as the rules are becoming more and more clear, we feel excited and thrilled by the competition. And we feel that we are stimulating our engineering workforce in a way that is going to bring to our customers better solutions than our peers. Then you have the second part of the answer, which is related to the citizen. The citizen is a father of three and a grandfather of four. And what I would like to tell my grandkids is that as the CEO of this company, I am bringing to them as a generation mobility solutions that will protect the unique planet we have. And I would like to tell my grandkids that I have the privilege of bringing along with me a group of people that are contributing in a fair, sincere, and concrete way to fixing the global warming problem of humanity. And we are doing that. We are exactly doing that. You just have to look at, at the numbers in terms of emission reductions all over the world of our company. We are bringing our fair share to contribute to fixing the global warming problem. And this is what I want to say to my grandkids. I want to tell them, look, your grandfather has been with his team contributing to doing this and with, with the workforce of Stenatis. For this to succeed, for this to succeed beyond the contribution of Stenatis, a certain number of other conditions are required for this to succeed. And we have to understand that those conditions for success are not only dependent on Stellantis. So we need to voice it, we the citizens, we the humans. We need to voice the fact that for this to succeed, not only we will bring to our people and to our consumers the zero emission mobility devices, but we also need clean energy. We also need to be able to make to manufacture batteries with a very low carbon footprint. We also need to recycle batteries. We also need to take care of using raw materials which are renewable. We also need to make sure that at the end of the day, we are supporting this mobility with a tax system that is sustainable for the societies in which we operate. So what we have been advocating and what I have been advocating as a citizen is that we need to have a 360 degree approach of this problem. It cannot be only about the mobility device. It has to be also about the full life cycle analysis, about the energy. Is it clean enough? How do we generate clean electricity? It's also about how do we extract the raw materials? Do we do it in a way which is from a carbon footprint acceptable? How do we reduce the carbon footprint of manufacturing batteries? How do we recycle batteries? How do we recycle rare raw materials that are not renewable on this planet? So the point is for this to succeed as a citizen, we need to bring everybody to understand that it is a 360 degree approach, not only an automotive industry problem. And if we don't do that, then we may focus on the mobility device only, and then we will discover a few decades later that by not having done the other stuff, we miss the goal. And as a grandfather of four, I don't want to be in that position. And that is my answer to your very fair question. Thank you for raising it. Back to you, Bertrand.
second question from uh, Gabriel Coppola from Bloomberg. It's related to data. Any privacy concerns? What if someone doesn't want Alexa tracking them in their car? If that's your field. Thank you, uh, thank you, Carlos. Well, the number one reason why we're developing a Stella Smart Cockpit is to provide an outstanding experience to our customers. And of course, a great experience starts with trust. Uh, and a trust-based relationship starts with respecting the privacy of our customers and the preferences of our customers. Uh, so yes, of course, if there is anything, any features that a customer doesn't feel comfortable with in the vehicle, the customers will have the capability uh, to express their preference uh, and get those preferences implemented. So um, very open to that. Customer trust is probably the most precious asset we have, uh, and we'll do everything to keep it. Thank you, Yves. Uh, I, I'm sure that Ned wants to add something to this one. Yeah, I, what, what I can add additional to what Eve said is um, our approach really is to deliver custom uh, digital experience and a custom agent, uh, not necessarily uh, Alexa. Alexa is going to be present along with that. But that sort of a custom uh, branded assistant uh, will be very unique for brands, and it will bring uh, the, the kind of knowledge uh, around the brand and around you know the trips around being connected to a smart home, to a digital life uh, that we will uniquely develop uh, along with what's traditionally available on these uh, digital assistants like uh, Alexa. And I think that that's a value that we will uh, bring to the customers. And that piece of information, again, can be, or, or experience can be customized in such a way, to Eve's point, that you can disable or enable, and it's up to really up to customers to decide how much they want to participate in an experience or not. But it, it is a customer. On the end of the day, it's customer decision. Uh, do they trust uh, us? Do they trust our partners to then participate in that, in that world? So uh, ends with that. Clear. Thank you, Ned. Thank you for that compliment. Back to you, Bertrand. Yes, next question is from uh, Stéphane Villemot from Wall Street Journal. For those of us who are less familiar with Amazon experience in the automotive industry, are there some specific automotive services the tech company already provides or some kind of automotive track records that made you think it would be uh, the best big tech? Ned, would you like to take this one? Sure. Um, thank you, Carlos. Um, so um, Amazon is obviously a, a newcomer in um, uh, providing services uh, as a partner to automotive industry. But, uh, they've been a really good partner uh, with, uh, um, with a, a cloud-first approach. Uh, they have enabled a number of our uh, uh, existing tier one suppliers to deliver services faster. Um, they have been uh, very helpful in um, uh, driving the cost down, your traditional cost uh, of developing software uh, and delivering services faster to the customers. Uh, so we see a very consistent track record with, uh, for example, the the pricing structure for the services that we use is not going up. It's actually coming down. The more you use, the significantly coming down. And there is a significant economic benefit of working and leveraging, uh, you know, uh, for example, AWS services. Over uh, three, four, five years, we've seen um, a, 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 a software and services that Amazon brought uh, as sort of extension of their network to automotive industry. Uh, for example, um, Alexa Automotive uh, has been sort of a very popular service. Uh, they have also included um, uh, a lot of sort of uh, uh, services in, in, a, in a world of uh, reaching out to customers and delivering uh, 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 unique, specific services uh, such as Fire TV and the music and those sort of things uh, in the digital cabins. Uh, so the track record is really good. And what we observed uh, is in, in this sort of uh, digital uh, cabin work is that they're leapfrogging. They're delivering something, uh, underlying technologies that they are completely different. It completely aligns to how we think about the future. Again, as I mentioned earlier, it's not about operating system traditionally. I'm going to flash device. I'm going to do these things on a, a regular basis. Why don't we just build that, everything that we can in the cloud with the ubiquity of a networking of the future today and the future? Most of that could be done in the cloud. So we believe uh, that the track record uh, is pretty solid and uh, we'll be able to deliver the kind of experiences we want to do. So maybe if you want to add some more. 
Yeah, ju ju just uh, two very concrete examples to, um, to help uh, uh, people who are not familiar uh, understand. Today, in uh, a Wagoneer and a Grand Wagoneer, uh, we're actually using uh, built-in Fire TV uh, from Amazon. So it, it's not like uh, we're starting uh, from scratch. We already have the experience of working in cars with Amazon. And, you can, and that provides very uh, simple uh, customer value that you, you'll understand immediately. You are watching a movie at home on Fire TV. Uh, you get on your car and the rear seat uh, currently, uh, and you just pick up your movie where you left it at home as the car uh, journey is starting. Uh, we're also uh, already using uh, Alexa Assistant in a number of uh, Jeep vehicles um, here in the US. Uh, so I think there is already a, a great track record uh, of Amazon in the industry. And of course, uh, with what uh, Ned added, I think you immediately understand uh, the power uh, of such a collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Ned. Thank you, Yves. Uh, great great uh, answers. Uh, Bertrand, please. Okay, next question is uh, coming from, uh, from Vince Bond from Automotive News here in Detroit. Uh, what role will lead dealership service department have as Stellantis leverages more over the air updates? Will dealership be a place where customers uh, can take their vehicle to help with updates if they don't understand the over the air process? Well, that's a, a great question. Uh, thank you. Indeed, this is bringing to us um, a bigger opportunity. The way we are uh, bringing more technology to our products is also, uh, I would say, a transformation of the relationship with the customer, an opportunity for our dealer network to enhance their ability uh, to offer a nice experience to our customers. Uh, we all know that the automotive industry globally has a significant homework to uh, deliver to improve the customer experience and the service quality of that, uh, of that interaction. So it's also for our partners and our dealers the opportunity somewhere to reset the clock, somewhere to use this change and this, uh, this breakthrough change to say, well, let's try to address this in a different way or a way that is going to give us a much better capability to make our customers happy, which is an opportunity that, of course, I'm sure our dealer partners are not going to miss. They know how important it is for them to reinforce their ability to make the customers happy. Of course, the technology and everything that relates to the uh, usage of this technology is going to bring uh, new, uh, new opportunities and, and new needs in terms of understanding how the system works, understanding what needs to be upgraded, understanding what are the opportunities for new services, understanding what we, the dealers, and ourselves can bring to make this customer journey a more enjoyable one. I'm not only talking about selling a car or selling a service. I'm talking about what happens through the life cycle of the product, including enhancing the performance of the product, including making sure that the car is kept fresh and upgraded over the life cycle, and as a consequence, we'll have a better residual value at the end of this life cycle, and that is going to benefit the customer, of course. So all of this is part of the opportunity with a capital O. And what we need to understand, and I think we do, both our dealer partners and ourselves, is that this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to reset the clock and do things in a different way that will bring to our customers a more enjoyable customer journey. So it's an opportunity that, of course, we do not intend to miss. The discussions have started in Europe already. Uh, I think that at one point in time, they will happen on a regional basis in the US also. But of course, it's an opportunity for a higher quality of interaction and discussion between the dealer uh, associations and ourselves. Make sure that we discuss about the real things that we could improve together, and that we decide how we can use this technology significant change as an opportunity to make this experience a much better one. Of course, uh, we all have the same intention, which is to get closer to the customer, understand the customer better, and bring, and bring the right answers. And that's the opportunity we have on the table. Of course, it started upstream with the technology, 
the software platforms, the, the new BV focus platforms, the new developments, the software academy, the 30 billion euros investments, all of this has started. And naturally, we are now going downstream. And that topic will be on the table within the few, uh, a few years. And this is what we are going to work on right now. So thank you for that uh, great question. And then we have the last one because time is running. Bertrand. Yeah, sure, Carlos. You are competitors, but we respect competition. And we know that there are several announcements today. So the last question is coming from Ben Foldy for Morty Journal. What are the specific volume commitments for BEV promoter that Amazon expect to take delivery of in 2023 and other years? It's a, it's a very precise question, which is part of our uh, agreement. And of course, as you know, when you have a business deal, you don't want to unveil all the details. I can tell you it's a big number. It's a significant number. But I can also tell you that it's not just because we are going to sell vans to Amazon. First, we already sell vans to Amazon. So it's, it's, uh, it's not a new, uh, a new business. It's uh, the acceleration and the growth of an existing business. And uh, it's a very competitive business, uh, despite the fact that the number is, is, uh, is big, could be even bigger. But what I value the most uh, in this specific part of the deal is that we are going to work intimately with Amazon about having an even more precise understanding of the customer needs of the last delivery, uh, last mile delivery uh, suppliers. Uh, that's where I see a significant opportunity is for us to understand even better what do those logistic providers need from us in terms of capability of our vans. It's not only about hardware, by the way, maybe also about software. And how can we improve their own efficiency in the way they deliver the last mile uh, service? And that's part of this. And of course, if we understand better what those professional customers need, I'm sure that this big number will become even bigger in the future. So it's also the starting point of a very nice business relationship that can grow in the future. And that will grow in the future for a very simple reason, is that we, were, we are among the top two LCV uh, sellers in the world right now. So we are competing for number one. And uh, the only way to be number one is to have a better understanding of the customer needs than our competitors, and a higher capability to deliver on the hardware and the software that will meet those needs. This is what I value the most in this. And of course, you can also notice that 2023 is the next year. So we are full speed, and we are, again, in a full execution mode. I would like to thank you all for your fantastic questions. We learn a lot from your questions. They are always on the spot. And I would like to thank you for attending this session I tell you that uh, Stellantis is on the move. Stellantis is moving on the execution fast forward. We have a highly talented team. We have tons of people who are selling us, sending us their resumes because they understand that Stellantis is changing. Stellantis is now moving in the tech direction. And I would like to thank you again for your support and your very precise and very helpful questions. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Yves. Thank you, Ned. Thank you, thank you very much. It has been our pleasure to be with you today. Uh, stay tuned. In two hours, Chris Fuel will uh, present uh, Chrysler's strategy on this stand in two hours. And of course, stay tuned because we will come back very soon to you with other, uh, uh, I would say, not only customer journey, but tech journey of Stellantis. So stay tuned. We'll come back to you very soon. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a good day.